Hello, everybody. Welcome to podcast Radio Angua Aviação, the show that's centered around interviews with key figures from the African aviation industry. You can watch all the episodes of podcast Radio Angua Aviação on YouTube and listen to the audio version of the episodes on Spotify, Audible, Anchor FM, Listencasts, Pocket Casts. Look, we're, we're literally everywhere now. So go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to our Facebook page as well as the news, um, the news website, anguaviasan.com. A N G O A V I C A O.com. Anguaviasan.com. So on today's show, we are honored to have Mr. Tony Ukachuku, CEO and founder of Aviators Africa, of the Aviators Africa Empire, which includes the Aviators Africa blog which is an engaging and interactive platform that aims to establish and maintain a relationship with the air traveler. It includes the Aviators Africa Tower Awards, which is an annual event organized for the aviation, travel, and tourism sector in Africa, designed as an event to recognize, celebrate, and honor excellence, as well as um, sustainability within the African aviation sector. Lastly, Tony Bukachuku is also the former director for Avia Deaf Africa. Mr. Tony Bukachuku, my big brother, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's, 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 it's an honor and, and, uh, to be here on your show. Thank you so much, my brother. Um, disclaimer, I call today's guest as my big brother for one reason. To set up, the, can I put it out there? Yeah. All right. To set up this conversation, I tried to get hold of him via um, email address, and I couldn't. Then I met Romo way up, Romo way up through John, John Howard. So then Romo accepted me to the club. There's a club. I didn't know about the existence of a club. And once I got in, who did I notice was there as well? <laughs> It was John and Tony. Um, so, like, I, I was so surprised because, like, he was the guy that I was looking for. But really, thank you, thank you very much for being here, big bro. Um, I'm very curious to know, like, all of the stuff that you do because uh, we, we're not used to seeing pri um, private initiatives uh, related to the industry sector, especially in Africa, um, since it requires so much capital, creativity, etc., etc. Et so. Um, could you please please explain like how you came up with the idea of A Aviators Africa and the Aviators Africa Tower Awards, please? Uh, thank you once again for having me. Um, so I, I started my career in the aviation industry as a cabin crew uh, flying for an airline. Uh, so I did that for a couple of years, but. During those times in my experience, I found that there was uh, a little bit of ignorance, if you will, or little knowledge about the sector uh, by even people that are frequent flyers, so-called frequent flyers. So I decided to play with the idea of coming up with a magazine, because at that time, especially in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole, they are just one or two magazines they were dedicated to African aviation. So I started a Aviators Africa magazine, mm -hmm. basically to kind of educate people to make informed decisions about air travel and what whatever you have or, you know, going on in the aviation industry. So I was opportune to uh, interview key stakeholders in African aviation and I did that for a couple of years, still doing that. We have 12 years now in the publishing industry. Uh, and of course, in doing that, I also find out that um, there is not really a platform to get aviators together to kind of network and interact. Then I started an event called Aviators Night in Nigeria back there as, as far back as 2010, 10, 2010 in Lagos. Uh, I did that for a couple of years. Because I didn't get the support, I was doing everything from my pocket. It was very challenging. I had to stop after doing four editions of Aviators Night. But because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm very 
Filipino, uh, very, how do I put it now, restless, if you will, you know, yeah. trying to add more flavor or more value in the aviation industry. Uh, then I now started uh, the, at the 10th anniversary of Aviators Africa Publishing, we now started, launched our event called Aviation Leadership CEO Forum. That was in 2019. And we did that in 2020 during the COVID period of virtual. Then right now, uh, we've done it three years in, in Nigeria. Then in the fourth edition, we are taking it to South Africa because we decided to launch out because it's not a it's not a Nigeria project, it's an African project. Uh, so we are taking it to South Africa. And of course, uh, that also gave birth to the TAR Awards. We thought that um, uh, there's no award that seeks to celebrate and recognize aviators in Africa by an African. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you see aviators in Africa getting awards from other other continents outside Africa, but we wanted to have a homegrown aviator Africa for Africans by Africans. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's how we started the Aviators Africa Tower Award. So Tower basically for us is like a symbol of of. Um, All right. So now, so that's amazing. That's amazing, big bro. Um, so, like, I'm curious to know, you just mentioned the Aviator Star Awards. I'm curious to know what are the categories or what the categories of, of the awards are and how can people apply? Okay, so, uh, unfortunately, voting has closed. Voting closed on the 25th of September. Uh, so, you can apply for the 2020 edition of the awards. So, you have to, you have to wait to apply for 2023. However, uh, can okay. you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. great. So yeah, so um voting is closed. Uh the results, the results are being collected at the moment, but basically there are about eight uh categories for the change maker award, which are for individuals that have contributed to the development of African awards. So we have Change the car award for STEM, you have change the car award for digital content in aviation, you have change the car award for uh for leading light, you have change the car award for leadership. So you have eight of those for individuals, then you have about 18 categories for brands. So from uh, airline of the year, promising airline, gender empowerment, um uh, air tra uh, uh, training organization of the year, airport management company of the year, etc. So basically, these are the categories. Wow, 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 wow. Now, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so you know that, as you know, you, you have much experience in this in this sector. There's usually some sort of credibility criticism that comes with the uh, convening of these sorts of events. Like, do the awards um, get any criticisms? And uh, if so, what, what are they? And if there are, how do you think that that criticism can be addressed? Thank you very much. Um, awards have been, like you said, uh, awards have been bastardized in this part of the world. Uh, yeah. I can just wake up one day, and because you're my friend or a podcaster or a journalist, I just decided to just yeah. give you an award because, hey, for the sake, for the heck of it, because I know you. But really, why we started the award is to try to address these concerns. You know, um, people don't really care about awards anymore. They say people buy awards and all that stuff. But we are trying to change that narrative by making it as transparent as possible. Okay. So uh, last year, our voters, the way we put up our voting system is. If you are voting for a particular category, you can actually see in real time who is leading in the vote. Okay, so it's not something that people can doctor. You know, you can track your progress. So maybe perhaps you are leading leading from the back. You can ask people to vote for you, and then if you go back, you can see how you progress. So we don't manipulate these things. And at the end of, at the awards, we showcase 
the percentage in categories, how people voted and how people won. So who came first, who came second, and in that order. Okay, so why we're trying to do this is because uh, a lot of to show that we are transparent enough to do this and also change that mindset that awards cannot can uh, can actually be uh, 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 authentic and you know people can actually earn and earn that those awards and not necessarily given to cronies or being bought. So basically, because we thought also that we can't because of the criticism start stop awarding people that deserve it. So mm -hmm. I can't say because somebody's criticizing the award, then I see somebody deserves to be recognized as an airport doing so well, or an airline doing so well, maybe uh, turnaround time or for customer service. And I say, oh no, because they criticize the award, I don't think I should recognize. No, people need to have a part in the bag. We go to conferences, people listen, they talk about so many things about how we can uh, improve the, uh, the, the, the sector, then people go back and implement these things. Certainly, some people deserve to be recognized for doing a good job. And others that are in the back should be able to look at them as role models and try to be like them. So that is the place for awards. So I don't think because of criticism, we should leave the place for awards. So I always argue that there's a place for conference. And after the conference, there's a place for people to implement what they've done at conferences then people should be awarded or recognized for if haven't implemented those policies and try to push the needle for. So basically, that is why we came into the game to award people and uh, it's how awards here to stay. No, that's amazing, bro, bro. That's amazing. So like, so the people don't like, the people don't have to be concerned. Right? The nominees don't have to be concerned. The spectators don't have to be concerned. The guests don't have to be concerned. So, like, um, is it is it a, a public voting? Is it public voting private or a hybrid system? So it's it's it's, it's public for everybody to vote. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, the the nominees can come back for votes and talk to their network, and you know, uh, based on the knowledge of the sector, can vote for them. Okay, so um, but to also correct the pressure. Uh, no matter how good we are, people will still criticize whatever you're doing. <laughs> but when you, once you know what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing. Okay, because uh, if you continue to look at the criticism, it will stop you from doing what you intend to do. We have a purpose and a goal to recognize uh, individuals who have contributed to the development of, uh, of African aviation by in excellence and sustainability. Okay, so if we see any such individual, we see any such brand, we must recognize them and tell, tell them. Are you there? Yes, I am. I know, and I. You know, I, I get like from, from your explanation, Big Bro. I got I got the sense that it's um, that it's uh, it is much um, just. The system is just. Yeah, and so um, I'll leave I'll leave it at that. So, like, since you have plenty of experience working on the tourism sector, I cannot think of anyone that's more qualified to talk about uh, the this matter. Like, what's your opinion? on the state of African tourism? Do you think that it has okay, improved? So uh, do you think that we still like have a long way to go? Or it, it's, a, it's worse off, why are we worse off? We have, I mean, some parts of Africa are doing pretty well, but they have a long way to go. For example, South Africa is doing well when it comes to tourism. Kenya is doing well when it comes to tourism. The Indian Ocean, like Seychelles and Mauritius, the part of Africa, they are doing well when it comes to tourism. But as a whole, as Africa, we are not doing so well in tourism because uh, we have so many barriers that impede, you know, connectivity and travel. Uh, but that's that's also one of my other projects. But that's another topic entirely. So <laughs> I launched this advocacy called Work for Love. It's a non-for-profit advocacy that is geared to advocate for a connected and borderless Africa. Because uh, we believe that Africa needs no borders. Okay? When we're going to have borders, it's in cheap free. I did it. Um, 
uh, I would I would never put you under pressure. We like the, the aviation, the African aviation aviation industry doesn't depend upon Mr. Upon Mr. Tony uh, Okoshuku's <laughs> organizations, but but you guys are doing uh, like what you are doing is, is amazing. I told you before the interview, and um, before the interview began, and I'll tell you now, like what the kind of projects that you lead are inspiring to people like me, and make a difference within the industry. And that is the most important thing. As time passes, uh, things tend to improve and people like me that like get to know of the existence of such initiatives become even more inspired. And, um, and I try to move the needle perhaps close to what, to what, like, to what you do and, and the people that are, um, they have similar projects do as well. So with that, on that note, um, Mr. Tony Ukwachuku, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. I lost it for a bit. No, nah, that's okay. It's okay. So on that note, on that note, on a note of um, uh, great wishes, and um, and um, and uh, and by thanking you, we conclude. Big brother, thank you very much for being here, and congratulations on all of your success. But wait, one last thing. One last thing. This is this is this is the most important. <laughs> this is the most important part. Knowing that John led me to Ramwood, Ramwood led me to meeting you. So at this point, Big Brother, you need to introduce me to someone from the aviation sector to keep the cycle going. You know. No worries. I'm going to introduce you to someone else. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Now we get in the, the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, big bro. Congratulations and uh, wishes of a fruitful upcoming Aviators Africa Conference Awards in October, which will take place in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you for having me. Thank you to the listeners at home. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.